In this video, we're going to make another type of obstacle that is pretty common in 2D side-scroller games, and that is falling blocks or slamming blocks. First thing we want to do here is let's go into our prop gallery, and it looks like we still have icicles selected from our last video. Let's choose an ancient battlement. I want this to be the rock or the block that falls on top of you. So we bring this up, and falling blocks are basically blocks that are up here, and they slam down on the ground, then they raise back up again and slam down on the ground. Keep on going back and forth. You need to avoid it. If it hits you while it's falling down, then you die. We're going to place this here. Just for the uh, illustration purposes also, we're going to go ahead and bring this initial spawn point up here so that we can kind of observe this at work. Because unlike our last obstacle, we also want this obstacle to just kill anything that it hits. So we have this enemy here that is going to walk this way and he might be the unfortunate victim of this little trap right here. We want to make sure that it can kill an enemy too if an enemy accidentally walks underneath of it. Right now before we jump into the brain, let's add a trigger zone to here. Let's go ahead and bring this thing up. Go to properties, brain, sensors, show trigger sensor and let's find that gizmo hiding around here looks like it was just right behind it let's select that let's turn off snap to grid we want to get this trigger zone to be uh, just at the very bottom of this block And something that uh, you also probably want to do is make it so that, at least on the Z scale, you make sure this does not overlap the edges. The thing we really don't want is you bumping into this block and you technically being in the trigger zone and then dying just by bumping into it if it's already on the ground. We're going to have logic that will, should fix most of that. But you know, there's always a chance that you could inadvertently have this too big and uh, run into it. That actually seems pretty good for what, what we're looking for. Trigger zone is just below this. Maybe we, we want to make it a bit lower to, to just make sure that we have enough of the tr trigger zone below the block so that it actually detects you before the block hits you. Now we can go ahead and add logic inside this block. And the logic I want to use is with a boolean. So we go to we go to values, we go to this boolean variable, and this is something that we haven't used yet. So booleans are a type of variable that can either be true or false. You can evaluate to see if this thing is true or this thing is false. Then something happens if it's true and something else happens if it's false. It's sort of like an on-off switch and really useful for setting up a, a lot of behaviors that look for when something is kind of activated or not activated. We're going to create a new bar Boolean variable. We're going to call this smash. So that Boolean is called smash. So when smash, or this also is shorthand for when smash is true, I can also say when smash equal to, go to values, Boolean, true, but we can also just say shorthand win smash, and that understands that smash is true. For a duration timer of, let's say, seven in frames. So duration timer is also something we haven't really played with before. Countdown timer waits the certain amount of time that you set for it to activate. A duration timer goes on for that certain amount of time. So whatever is on the do side of this is going to continue on for seven frames. Again, the game runs at 30 frames per second, so this will run for less than a second. Then we want to have the position, go to vector components, Y, because Y is up and down, so we want this to move up and down. Position Y, decrement by 0.5. So half of a meter. 
This means the position of this object is going to be decreasing or going down half of a meter every single frame, and it's going to happen for seven frames. That gets us to 3.5 meters that this thing is going to move down during those seven frames. We're going to use that 3.5 meters in just a second. We're also going to have, after a countdown timer, so countdown timer of seven frames. So basically, countdown timer seven frames, that means that after this duration timer is done, we are going to go to Create and choose Shockwave. This is going to play this cool shockwave effect when this thing hits the ground. And then we're also going to say, after a countdown timer of, go to Values, Numbers, two, so count the timer, this one won't be in frame, so of two seconds, then smash is going to be equal to, go to values, boolean, false. This now sets smash to be false, so none of this will run anymore because smash is no longer true. Let's bring this up now. Remember how I said before that this thing is going to decrease by 3.5 meters because it's going on for seven frames and it's decreasing by half a meter per frame? The nice thing, or the great thing about Snap to Grid is when you move something, it's moving in increments of half of a meter. So we can take that to move this block up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've made it go up seven times for half a meter, which equals 3.5 meters, or the exact amount that it's going to be moving down, which means this thing is going to slam down and end exactly right here on the ground. So it won't be going through the ground. It won't be stopping before it hits the ground. That's really important because we want this thing to feel like it's falling. So this thing needs to understand where the ground is and kind of stop around there. So we're just doing that by counting it manually ourselves. Let's go ahead and test this now. So we test it, and this thing is not slamming down. Well, the simple truth behind that is because nothing is making this Boolean true. Smash is not being made true at any point. It's only being made false right here. Let's just quickly change that up at the top here, where after a countdown timer of, let's just say, one, then smash equals, go to values, boolean, true. So after one second, smash will be equal to true. And let's actually make this a start of two, so smash doesn't continue to be set as equal to true every single frame after one second. Go into test here. And there, it slammed down. But it slammed down, and you saw some issues. It it had the shockwave that played after the fact. Also, it uh, doesn't go back up. Well, that's a problem. We want this thing to go back up. To do that, we need to have a new thing here, which is a kind of what happens when smash is not true. So when smash is not true or not false, we can write that out by saying, going to timing logic, not smash. And that means basically smash is equal to false. So when not smash, a lot of times with falling blocks, what you'll have is a slam down really fast and raise a bit slower. So we want this block to increase upwards at a fifth of the speed that it fell downwards. We're going to copy this logic right here. So to make it a fifth of the speed, let's first say duration timer is going to be 35 frames instead of 7 frames. And position Y is going to increment by or increase by 0 0.1, which is a fifth of 0 0.5. And then after, let's say, a countdown timer of 3 seconds, we're going to copy this line 8 right here. After a countdown timer of 3 seconds, so it's two, let's change this to three. Let's make smash equal to true. And we can now get rid of smash equals to true up here. 
But what this means is we're going to start out with not smash. Smash is going to be equal to false when we start the game. That means the very first thing this block is going to do is that it's actually going to raise upwards. Then it's going to slam down, which means we need to bring it back down to the ground. We need this block to start on the ground. Let's test this. So we have it increasing, slams down, increasing, slams down. But that goblin is not being destroyed. And also the shockwave was playing at a delay. So let's tackle both of these issues. Well, the first issue is a shockwave. Now, now look at here, we have after countdown timer of seven in frames, do shockwave. So that seems like it should work. But what this is actually doing is after seven frames, this line shockwave is running every single frame. So every single frame, this thing is throwing out a shockwave. That's moving so fast, it can't create the shockwave effect. This one we can simply fix by going to timing and logic and saying start at two, count on timer, seven in frames, do shockwave. Now this will run that shockwave only one time. The next thing we want to take care of is killing something that is under this thing. So let's go to our spikes that we took care of in our last tutorial. And these spikes just look for when started to in trigger zone global player, kill it. Let's copy this code. Always a great idea when a code works in one of your objects to so just go ahead and copy it into other objects that are using the same thing. We're going to go back into our block. And we want this to only be checking for when smash is activated and this thing is falling. So for those seven frames, this is going to be looking for if something is in its trigger zone, it's going to kill it. We now just need to remove global player. And this will still run because what this is looking for is basically, well, actually, we can get rid of uh, started to as well. So. When anything is inside of the of this thing's trigger zone, it kills that thing. Let's go on a test. Let's see this at work. So our poor goblin, well, it looks like he lived to serve another day, but not this time. And that took care of our goblin. Let's see if it takes care of our human too. And yes, that did take care of our human. He is uh, dead just like the goblin. The next thing I want to do is make a series of these. I'm going to copy this battlement piece right here and make a second one. And typically when you have falling blocks right next to each other, there's a delay between them. Maybe one falls a second after the other. In order to do that, we simply need to take this code right here, where win not smash do all these things and make smash equal to true, and put all of this under a countdown timer of one. So countdown timer one, make this all a child line underneath of there. And now it's gonna wait for one second until it runs all of this. And that will give us a delay. Let's go back to test. And now we have a nice delay here. Now, I was actually killed by running into that goblin because I, I, was, I was silly. I walked right into him. It wasn't these things that killed me. But now I can get through here just like before. And I believe the second thing will kill me as well, just like the first one. Great. So we have created some slamming block mechanics here. We're going to go ahead and stop here for now for this 2D side-scrolling tutorial series. We may be adding additional videos at a later time, but this should give you enough of the basic mechanics to build out from what we have taught you here and try and make your own full 2D side-scrolling game now. You have an idea of how to make enemies, how to make obstacles, how to make collectibles, how to display those collectibles, how to make respawn points, checkpoints, moving platforms. You know how to do a lot of stuff, and these things are all the core mechanics of a 2D side-scroller, so put all that stuff together and try and make your own stage from here.